Lucy ITV, an inspiration for everyone. We inspire, we entertain, we educate everyone to their divine heart. Church of Christ, the inspiration of television, inspiring. Hello, brothers and sisters, friends of CSC IT. Welcome to another exciting video. It is the second Saturday of the month of July. You know what today is? It is the moment of our inspiration. Today, it is our first edition of this inspirational moment. I hope you are preparing all your heart to be a participant, an active participant of today's section. Once again, I welcome you. I know your brother somewhere in London. For today's moment of inspiration, as always say during the news, we are going to be having a topic that says, Don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. Our text is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. We're going to read from verse 8, 9, and 10. But before we proceed, let us look at some of the dimensions of our today's class. What are we going to be talking about? We will be taking the introduction of this topic. We we'll look at the aims and objectives of our discussion for today. We are also going to be having the understanding of some of the key terms that we have in the topic. Also, we are going to take the reading of our, our text. We are going to take it verse by verse. Then after we will look at the four things that the verse want us to understand, what the verse want us to never forget, and what the verse want us to always remember. And after we are also going to take ten things. That all participants of today's class should go home with and should never forget to always remember. So we will look at the reason people always forget to remember. Why do people always forget to remember situations they are not supposed to forget? Or do they actually forget? Is it intentional act or is it an unintentional act? We are also going to look at it under the reasons why people forget to remember. How to improve our ability not to forget what we have learned or not to forget what we are supposed to remember. We're also going to look at the consequences of forgetting what to remember. So if you forget what you're supposed to remember and not use the way you're supposed to use it, are there consequences we're going to be looking at that? And also we are going to look at the reward of not forgetting what you want to remember. The reward, are there rewards if I keep remembering what I should remember at the time I'm supposed to remember them? Do them at the time I'm supposed to do them, are there rewards? And after we will take the conclusion of our lesson. Do not forget that the reason for this section is to keep us inspired in all ramifications of our life, spiritually, physically, educationally, socially, and all ramifications of life. That is why it is titled A Moment of Inspiration. For today's topic, why did the Officiators Council think it wise that we should be looking at this topic? Don't forget to remember. It is obvious that so many people in the society keep forgetting what they should not forget. It is very obvious that many people do not forget what they should remember. They know what they should know quite well, but they don't want to do it acting as though they have forgotten what they should remember. But the Bible wants to help us to understand certain things we should not act as though we have forgotten them, even when we have not forgotten them. We can lie to everybody, but we can lie to the conscience. So the conscience knows where, when you know what to do, and you refuse. That's what the Bible says, when you know the right thing to do, and you refuse to do them, it is what? Automatically a sin. So the, the reason for this, our lesson today, is to inspire us to always do what we know are right thing. To always do that thing that we know. We should not always forget them, you know, no matter the situation of time. That is what this lesson is going to look at. And that's why we turn it the introduction of the lesson. Now let's look at the end and objective. Why do we want to, you know, study this lesson today? Why is it necessary that we look at this topic? Don't forget to remember. So this lesson ends on awakening the hearts of men to remember the common things of life that they might have forgotten. The lesson ends at to awaken the hearts of Brothers and sisters, friends and participants who are watching me at this hour, 
to remind us of the things that the common things, things that it seems that we may feel they are common, you know, that we may have forgotten to reawaken our mind to remember them. Number two, this lesson also objectifies that participants should be able to identify areas of their life they need to reflect back at. Participants should be able to identify the areas of their life that they need to do what reflect back at. In case you might have forgotten certain things you are supposed to reflect back as, this moment could also be termed as a moment of what? Reflection. Where you have to reflect back your mind to the common things you might have forgotten and remember them. Because the topic says don't forget to do what? To remember. This lesson aims also at inspiring young and old hearts to keep up the good works in faith, acknowledging the reward bearing. The lesson also ends at inspiring young hearts, old hearts, whatever state of age that you are, reminding you that you should keep up the good works that you believe in, the good works of the faith, knowing that there is what a reward. That is one of the ends of this lesson. Don't forget to remember. Let us look at some of the key terms that we have in the topic. That is understanding of the key terms in this topic. Number one, the word don't. I believe you'll be using the word don't by saying to do not. In short forms, don't. You can actually tell your child, don't touch that thing. Don't go back. Don't do that. Don't do this and don't do that. What do you understand by that term, don't? Here we say don't is simply a command or an entreaty not to do something. A command or an entreaty not to do something. It is a strong petition. It is not just a petition, but a very strong petition not to do something, which can also be considered as a solicitation. So now, if you don't want to see it as a petition, you can see it as what a solicitation. That means you are solicitating for an action. You are solicitating for a favor. You are solicitating for something. Or, it could also be seen as a word that begs on begging for an action to be what carried out. Don't. But for the sake of this lesson, I want us to go with this definition that don't is a strong petition. So this lesson for today, we want to give you a strong petition why you shouldn't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. A strong petition for our viewers today why they should not forget to do what to remember. The next key word we look at is what? Forget. The word forget may look very simple, but if you've been asked to explain one word, what forget is, you may find it difficult to describe what forget is, but you all know what forget is. Here we say forget simply means the act of losing remembrance of something unintentionally. So forget means the act of losing remembrance of something all intentionally. You didn't plan to lose remembrance of that thing. You didn't wish to. But unfortunately, you have lost the remembrance of that thing. That is, when unintentionally leave the thing undone, you intentionally didn't do what you're supposed to do because you have done what you have forgotten. Or get to remember a given obligation. Or an unintentional act. You have unintentionally forgotten to do or carry out an obligation. We can say that that you have done what you have forgotten something. The next one is remember. Remember, in the other hand, means to recall from one's memory. I said remember, in the other hand, means what? Means to recall from one's memory. To, mem to memorize, to keep in mind something or what obligation. So what therefore is our topic today? Don't forget to remember. Link it back to the definitions of these key things. We can therefore say that the topic don't forget to remember is considered as a strong petition and a solicitation to all our viewers, including you, including you today, to not unintentionally lose the remembrance of what you are expected to do. To not unintentionally is a strong petition to you not to unintentionally lose the remembrance of what you are expected to work to do 
what you expected to keep in mind, what you expected to recall, or what you expected to what memorize as an what obligation. I hope you get that right. You didn't get that right to take it again. You say for this purpose, don't forget to remember is a strong petition that we are going we are going to petition you today not to forget to remember the things you are supposed to do what to recall your expectations you are supposed to do the things you are supposed to keep in mind the things you are supposed to memorize and the things you are supposed to do as what well, obligation don't forget to remember now let's take our reading before we proceed we talked about Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We are going to read from the state 9 and 10. The state read, Let him man live many years and days in them all. Yet, let him remember the days of darkness. For they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Eight, okay, 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thy heart. And in the way and in the sight of thy eyes, but no doubt that for all these things, thou God will bring thee into judgment. Verse 10 Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, or childhood and for childhood and youth are vanity. There are certain things this Bible verse wants us not to forget. There are certain things this Bible verse wants us to remember. There are certain things, I take again, there are certain things this Bible verse wants us to remember. One, there are certain things this Bible verse don't want us to forget. So, it could be that you have forgotten, but the verse, the message of God wants you to remember them. So, these are two things. Things you know, you forgot and you remember. Things you know, you do not forget. But it is a strong petition that you should not what? Forget. Let's look at four things the text wants us to place in our heart. Number one, don't forget to know that your lifespan on earth can be short or long. Therefore, make good use of your life just in time. Don't forget to know that your lifespan on earth can be what? Short or long. Don't forget what verse 8 said. For if a man live many years and days in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness. But if a man live many years, the word thief is a conditional word that shall suggest that you may not actually live many years. So your life may be short or your life may be long. But however, the Bible here wants you not to forget the fact that whether your life be short or your life be long, you should make very good use of it now. Remember that you are being on earth is for a short while. So whatever you are doing, the life struggles you're running through in this in your educational pursuit, your life journey on earth, and all of these things, remember that your life on earth is for a short while. But don't forget to remember that you can live a short time or a long time in heaven. Don't forget it. Do not feel you have time. Do not feel, oh, there are a lot of things I need to do, a lot of time. I'm still young, I'm at the age of 10, I'm at the age of 20, I'm 30, I'm 40, I have a long time to live. I will do it better. No, there is no later. Your lifespan can be short. It could be long. Whatever you must do, it's now. And while you are doing the things you are doing, remember, remember that your life on earth is just for what? A short while. Number two. Don't forget that life is full of ups and downs. There are good days and there are evil days. Therefore, take wise decisions continuously. Do not forget that the life you are living you will be filled with ups and downs. That's why the Bible says that we experience the days of what? Darkness. So when the life may place you at up, may good use of it. When it turns you down, do not forget that there was a time you had a good life. 
That's why we have here that says, when evil days come to you, remember that they were what? Good days. So when things turn wrong, you lose your job, you lose this, you have lost that. Fire break out and run down your home, run down your offices, run down your, your shops, and so many life changes around you. Those days that come to you are what? Evil days. They went to so many people in the past. People like Job suffered a lot of dark days. But do not forget. Always remember that they were not good days. This will guide your tongue. This will guide your behavior. This will guide your actions. This will guide your thoughts. So that you will not sin against God. You will not sin against who? God and humanity. Because of that day. The Bible said that Job didn't sin against God in all that he passed through. Another day, we are going to look critically, take a critical study of the life of Job and what he passed through so that we get to understand the pleasure he had. Yet, Satan could not have something to hold hands on by said, Job did this or that. He said this or that. So when the day is turned evil, when the day is seen dark, you say, do not forget to remember that they were what good days. Number three, don't forget that everything in life is vanity. Don't forget that everything you owe is vanity. The Bible said, naked man cometh to the world and naked man shall return. You come with nothing. And the world will begin to see things, begin to have things, and those things be, begin to come to you. Oh, come on. They are what? Vanity. Why are they vanity? Because you are not going to live here forever. If life own millions of cars, if life own mansions, if life own the whole world, power, be the president, be the governor, say the president. Number one citizens, number second citizen, whatever you own, all are what vanity. That's what the Bible is saying. Don't forget to remember. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, don't forget that everything under the sun is what vanity. That will guide your life. That will direct you. That will direct your steps. That will protect you on your behavior. You say, whatever level you have gone to in life, remember the vanity of life. Three people with caution. The greatest investment you could ever invest is investing in the life of someone. That is the only thing you can go home with. The greatest thing you could do that is more that is not a vanity is going gold. The greatest impact you can create is the impact you create on individual lives and on the society. That is what will stand for you even after you have passed through the vanity of life and you have ended your score. Vanity upon vanity. But there is one thing that is not vanity. The Bible says, wherever you have made your treasure, that's where you're happy. Do not forget, Jesus never meant that the treasures are only money, income, no. Your doing, your actions, your daily life, your daily behavior are what treasures. And whatever you're doing in your daily life, you are laying aside. But if what you are laying aside is not a treasure, it's not heavenly treasure, your heart cannot be connected to the kingdom of God. It is only when what you are laying aside is treasure, you are treasuring, it is a treasure to you, treasure to the heavens, that your heart can be connected to the kingdom of God. Don't forget to remember the vanity of life. Number four, as young people, don't forget to rejoice in the days of your youth. As a young person, there is no reason why you should take your life. The Bible say rejoice in the days of your youth. There is no reason why you should live in sorrow. There is no reason why you should allow one young man somewhere to be the reason why you are unhappy. 
There is no reason why if you allow one young woman somewhere to be the reason why you are you, you, you are discomfort. There is no reason why you should allow one thing or the other in life to, to, to take away your happiness. The Bible says, as a young man, rejoice in the days of what you wish. Walk in the ways of thy heart. Walk in the ways of the heart. Do you know what that means? Whatsoever your heart desires, go for it. Whatever your heart wants you to do, do it. Don't forget to remember. Always remember that the Bible says, whatever your heart wants you to do, do it. And in the sight of your eyes, whatever your eyes see it, and you see that this thing is good for you to have it, go ahead and have it. That is what the Bible is saying. But there is a, a clause. There is a good don't forget to remember as you are rejoicing the days of your youth that as you are making melodies of life that as you are walking in the ways of thy heart and all of these in the sight in the sight of your eyes that you should remember that God will bring you the word judgment that whatever you do whatever situation whatever things you love Whatever your heart changed, whatever your heart wanted to do, whatever your sight wanted to go and see, that you should not forget that the reward judgment. Don't forget that the reward judgment. If your heart wants you to go after chasing women, go after chasing women. If your eyes want you to go after every man that is inside a fancy car, go after every man that is inside a fancy car. If your eyes want you to go after every beautiful woman that is under the state, go after everything that is under the state. The Bible is telling you, don't forget that everything you do will be brought to what? Just me. You will be brought to stand before. You see how someone is brought to stand before the court? You are put in a small box and you look at you, look at the securities everywhere, and then you look at the, the, the masses, people who are set down, they hear your story, they hear what, to shame you of what you have done, and they look at the chief judge. And whatever the chief judge pronounces, that is where you are. And that is what you have to abide in. Because the Bible is telling you that in all things you do, don't be sad in life, don't be, don't be discomfort, rejoice in the days of your youth, walk in the ways of your heart, walk in the sight of your eyes. Enjoy the life the way you want to enjoy. Do everything you want to do. But don't forget that you will be brought to the judgment throne of God. You know what that means? Walk around. You know what that means? Select the things you do. No matter what your heart thinks. If you, whatever your heart wants you to do, select what you do. So that you wouldn't do what? You will not become a treasure to the heaven. You wouldn't do what? You will not become a treasure to your heart. Whatever you want to see, select what you see and select what you interpret when you see and how you take what you see and how you want what you see so that they will not become, you know, a standing block to you and become a judgment to you and you have to Don't forget to remember. Ten things a person shouldn't forget about life and what to always remember. It doesn't mean there are no other things outside this thing. There are. But I want to Quickly, point out this ten thing for you to be able to see that. Alongside the four things the Bible himself has pointed out. Number one, remember not to judge anyone using anything as a parameter. Remember not to judge anyone using anything as a tool. Oh, oh this guy. Look at his suit. His suit is uh, looking too ugly. This guy does not have money. Oh, look at the way they are. It's like this man is a very troublesome person. Yes. He is always burning his face. Oh, look at this man will go to hellfire. This man is not a good person. This man. Remember that there is no parameter to use as a medium, as a as as a yardstick to judge anybody. Don't forget that change. Is the only constant thing that is in life. That person you are judging because of his job, because of his situation, because of what is passing through, you are judging. Don't forget that the only thing that is constant in life is what? Change. 
Today you may be married in your office. Today you may be the president of Nigeria, of the whole world. Today you may be in high places. But there is always one thing that is constant change. And that change, the change around you, and you find yourself in the situation that that man that you were judging was. And that man you were judging is in your situation, in your position. Then, judge. Number two. Don't forget the best memories which are important as your own life. Don't forget the best memories. In your office that you are working, there are people who are kind to you. Don't forget them. In your church that you are worshiping, brethren there are your family. Don't forget them. Keep them as memories. In your school that you are obtaining a certificate, don't forget your colleagues there, your, your fellow students there. Wherever you find yourself, don't forget the memories that are as important as a life. There are people who spend time with their friends and they have good time together. But when good things come to them, they forget their friends. Don't forget them. Always remember to seize every moment in your life. Be it in your family. Be it among your friends. Be it among your colleagues. Whatever it may be to create a memory. Seize moments and create memories. And use those memories to create what? Treasures. Number three. For the sake of time, number three. Remember to do your best and derive satisfaction in what you do. Do your best. Derive satisfaction in the things that you have done. Good, better, best. Best is always looking as though it is the apex. There is a good, there is a better, but there is a best. Always do your best. And whenever you have done your best, Derive satisfaction. Do not feel downcasted that you have not done your best. Whatever situation that comes, take it that you have done what? Your best. If the way other things you could have done, you have made it the best. You have already done them. But since that didn't work out, you can think of no other things you could do. For whatever you are able to think and do, that is your best. Derive satisfaction. Don't forget to be contented. When you have done your best and you have derived satisfaction, don't forget you are contented. Not because Mr. A is doing his own best and his own best is better off than your best or is best of your best. And then you begin to want to do otherwise just because you want to get to his best. Because you have put on all your best and you could not afford a car yet. You want to look for other means that are evil, that will not be a treasure to heaven and a treasure to your own life. Just because you want to get the best. No. If you have done your best and work in your best way as a woman, yet you are not married, no spouse, keep doing your best. God remember. If you have done your best as you should as couple, yet you don't have a child, keep on your best. Be contented with your situation. You can always aspire to do more. Contentment does not mean restriction. You are not being restricted from doing more, from researching more, from studying more. You can do more, but be contented in whatever you do. And whatever you do, do your best. And be satisfied with it. Number four. Don't forget to be confident in yourself and in what you do. Don't forget to be confident in yourself. If you are not confident in yourself, you cannot do anything the best. If I am not confident in myself, I won't sit here to speak with you. If you are not confident in me, you wouldn't sit there to watch. Always have confidence in what you do. You know what? Remember, the lack of confidence brings you no self-esteem and makes you feel less and unstable in life. Lack of confidence makes you what have to no self-esteem. Brings you down and makes you unstable in all your ways. Number five. Remember not to showcase your power to a person who seems weaker than you. Oh, you have the power. There are people who are weak around you. 
don't show your power to them. They are not those that will experience your power. You will only end up downcasting them. Don't show your power to them. Don't forget also that there is somebody better than you. When you are in the midst of those that you are weaker than you, you are stronger than them, you may want to use your office to, to place them down. Because you are the, the senior supervisor, or you are a supervisor, or you are an MD, or you are whatever that you are in your office, in life, socially, educationally, wherever you are, I will feel that because of my power, I will use it to suppress those who are under me, who are weaker, who are lesser than me. Don't forget there are somebody in that same organization that is more than you. Even if the company belongs to you, don't forget that there is another man that owns another company that is more than your company, that your company cannot even be worthy to be a one-tenth of what they have. Humility. Humility is the key to life. Number six. Remember to learn every day because those who keep learning continue to grow and keep being developed even as the society keeps growing and developing. The society keeps growing every day. The society keeps developing every day. If the society does not develop, you will not get to have this Bible in your phone. If the society is not growing today, you will not see the changes that you see within the walls of the technology, within the areas, the social life. So, so uh, you could stay here and find yourself in America, communicating with the people in America. You could stay wherever you are and communicate with anybody in any part of it. So, all of these things are worth growing and developing. For you to live up to the standard of whatever growth and development of your society, you must keep learning. The very moment you stop learning, you cease to grow and to be developed. And that's why we say, don't forget that what you have learned today may either become irrelevant tomorrow or still important. So when the society is growing and is developing, it might have grown beyond what your society of yesterday was. You know what that implies? That implies that what you might have learned yesterday may become what? Irrelevant. The society may not need it anymore. So you don't come out and say, do you know what I have gathered? The experience I had, what I studied, what I knew, what you had known yesterday that have become what? Irrelevant. And may still be important. So these two things should be in your mind. What I had yesterday, what I knew yesterday could be irrelevant or could be important. So that when you make a point somewhere and they look at it and say, no sir, this point is no longer relevant. You shouldn't feel embarrassed. It has, it has been what has better. Learn every day. Number seven. Always remember that God loves you more than you will ever know. Always remember. Whatever situation you find yourself, whatever you do, wherever you are, whether how I praise on you, whether how happy you are, praise on you, whether how poverty is knocking you down, always remember that God loves you more than you should you ever know. If you are able to remember that God loves you, it will be a stepping stone for your growth. I will say, here, don't forget that God works in a mysterious way. And today may be your own turn of miracle. Trust me. When you always remember that He loves you more than you even know, He cares for you more than you know, He, he cares about you more than you know, He plans good things for you, He says, God, I'll go to you. Then, don't forget that he does miracles. And today, that you want to give, give up, lose hope, may have been the day of your own miracles. Seven. Number eight. Remember that everyone cannot always love you as you may wish them to do. Everybody cannot always love you. You can't always love you. You know everybody that can love me? Of course not. Of course I should know that. Of course you should know that. Everybody cannot also hate me. So because Mr. A, A hates me, Mr. B hates on me, or the whole of their groups hates on me, does not make me a hater to everybody. 
ఈరోజు మీకు ఎనిమిది ఏ తమ్ము When you come across those who don't value you, you will still learn to value them even when they don't value you. So don't forget that there is only one person that will love you continually and that one person is you. I want to love that someone man. I can't run away from him. He is me. I am he. So I cannot run away from him. He is me. So I will only do what? Love him. So if the whole world hates you, love yourself. When you learn to love yourself, you position yourself in a way that people will learn to love you. But when you hate yourself, others will follow suit. Number nine. Remember that nothing will last forever. You have them by chance. Remember that nothing will last forever. All that you have, you only have them by chance. The chance could be that the father had them. The chance could be that you were exposed to have them. The chance could be that they were given to you. The chance could be that you had opportunity to work and what you worked for pays and you had them. Whatever comes your way comes by chance. So don't forget that what belongs to you today did belong to someone else yesterday. What you have today belong to someone else yesterday and what you are having today will belong to another person tomorrow why to yourself why drugs why raise your shoulder why become pompous why do you allow pride to swallow you when you know that what you have today belong to someone else yesterday you have one million today someone else had one million yesterday And if you don't spend one million, you spend. And if you went around and around and around and now God's to you, and you now have one million. And I'm telling you that that one million belongs to another tomorrow. Because you will definitely spend it as well. And somebody else will also have what? One million. But some women now will have that one million. <laughs> don't look down on anybody. All you could do is to use what you have and create an impact. The impact that you create belong to only you. That is your treasure. So when books are open, your books of treasures shall be open. And what are the things in your treasure? What you were able to use, don't forget to come to the world by chance. All you had was by chance. And, you, you know, and all you had belonged to someone yesterday. You also got them. You make use of them judiciously. And then you leave the world and leave it for another person. But when you use them, What do you use them for? That thing you use them for is it a treasure or a cost? You need more. That's what we're saying. And lastly, number 10. Remember that you have to stop crying as long with, with no hope. No matter the situations of life, no matter what you're facing, no matter who is pressing on you, no matter who is pushing you, no matter who is beating you, remember that you must what? Stop crying. Don't forget that whatever has happened, That's half is for good. Don't forget that whatever has happened has happened for what? Good. That was our uh, uh, inspirational quote. And then... Um, and then... Um, when is it? For those of you that are following our social media platform, follow our social media platform. You will get me inspired daily. You see, don't forget that whatever that happened has happened for good. Whatever is happening now, right now in your life, is happening for good. Whatever is going to happen tomorrow in your life is going to be happening for good. Even if somebody dies, even if your whole family dies, even if you lose your job, even if, even if your car got accident, whatever is for good. There are reasons for you. 
all you need to do is communicate back to your father with humility, humbleness of heart. And if the situation needs a recheck, you cannot recheck. It is only God that can reject that situation and revert back what has happened. Reject ever mean that you will lose the things he has. He is going to have them. Not to He never knew. So all that happened to him could be said that they all happened for what? For good. Yes, they all happened for good. Now let's look at some of the reasons people forget to remember. So why do people forget things they shouldn't forget? Why do they not remember these things in all of his life? John, there are many reasons. Let's take some of the reasons. So reasons people forget to remember. There are several reasons, just like I've said, why people, one, intentionally, two, unintentionally forget them. That implies that people could forget them intentionally. They don't just want intentionally simply means they, they know these things, but they don't want they pretend as if they have forgotten them intentionally. They know you do. They have seen that brother, they have seen that sister, but they pretend they as though they did not see. Or the brother told something, the sister said something earlier, and they pretend they did not remember. No what they do. That is intentional act. But only intentionally you might have forgotten based on different factors. Let's look at some of these. Number one. Let's look at unintentional factors. Why people forget things? Information overload. When information is too much, is too crowded, is too crowded, is too crowded in the memory, you tend to forget other things that are coming in. Find a way to refresh your memory. Not really format, but select and delete. Check the information in your memory. Is this still up to date? Is this still necessary? Is this still important as the society is growing? The ones that aren't, also delete. So we have skills. So we have ability to accommodate new ones. Number two, lack of paying good attention. Lack of paying good attention. As I'm speaking, if you haven't paid closer attention to what I'm saying, with all your mind, with all your soul and spirit, you will learn to forget. You, you will forget this thing. So people forget unintentionally because they didn't take close attention in the worship hall. The man of God was speaking, teaching, summoning, giving someone and all of that. But yet, when they came out of the church building, everything is gone. Because they didn't pay attention. They were busy pressing their phone. They were busy ch -ch 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 inside the church. They were busy doing certain things that didn't, that wasn't a treasure to their life and to the heaven. And that is why they have forgotten what they have learned. This implies pay close attention at all times, wherever you do. Memory interference. When information clashes with each other, it interferes. The, the Bible is, is the what word of the church. But today, Churches have decided to interpret the Bible in different ways, and that's why we're having memory interference. What church A is teaching their member is different from what church B is teaching. So when a member of church B is going to church C, C is hearing a different thing from what was heard in A and B, there are what interference. The man begin to study the Bible, study the word of God, select what you learn, select what you unlearn. And you select what you will learn. Number four, emotional state. The state of your emotion at the time where a message was passed will show whether you remember the family. You cannot be at a stressful stage and want to remember what you have learned. You cannot be at a state of devastation and say you want to remember what you have learned. You cannot be broken down. And then you say you want to get more, be at a good state. And then you'll be able to remember what you have learned. So don't forget to remember. Sleep deprivation. So many people don't sleep. I know I don't sleep properly. You know, because of too many things I have to do. 
but I give time to sleep. And they decide not to go to work for a whole day, two days, and sleep. And take a rest. Because sleep deprivation will affect your memory. Aging. They know you grow older, they know you grow older, you forget things. So it is better you learn every day, even in old age, so that as you are learning, you are forgetting you are learning. You have to keep your lack of reputation. You don't, you don't practice what you have learned. You don't practice. As a student, you don't read your books. You don't, you don't repeat after yourself. You stand before the mirror and repeat what you have learned. Teach yourself. You lack reputation, you lack remembrance. Destruction. Destruction makes people to forget what they have learned. You cannot be in the classroom you are being distracted. How do you want to remember what you have learned? You cannot be in the church and you are being distracted. How do you want to remember what you have learned? Distraction. Now let's look at intentional reason. Reasons that you have for you are not forgotten this thing, but you don't just want to. You are acting as though you are forgotten. Yeah. Intentional acts. Avoid them. So because this man always cautioned you, so 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 you saw him coming the right way, you took the right way. You know, so that you act, ah, you know, the man sees you and move his eyes and act like you didn't see you, since you don't want to see you. And when he said, I saw you the right way, ah, so I didn't see you, I was busy. But you knew you saw. All the things he has told you earlier, which are good things you are supposed to imbibe. You let them go. You avoid them. When he says, come to Bible class, that's his time. The, the minister will tell you, come to church. That's his time. You know, so they can hear the word of God. And you know, thank you, that's also brother will be taking some more. Not that you've forgotten that the church will be by nine. Because the brother will be taking something that will take place by nine to ten. You avoid that time. And come to church by ten. Avoid them. Naya. You refuse to acknowledge the facts you are supposed to acknowledge because it's coming from God. Someone, yeah? because it's coming from that brother or one sister in life. You deny the fact. You have denied yourself an information vital. You have denied yourself what you are supposed to imbibe. You have denied yourself future remembrance. How can you remember what you have denied already in the family? How can you remember what you have denied? What you claim right, how will you remember that this thing you are not supposed to do them? If your husband or your wife keep telling you this is not what you, you deny them, you give reason why you have to do it. Then how will you now remember next time that you were told not to do this thing? How can you remember them? No. And that's the reason why people intentionally forget things. It's suppression. So you intentionally suppress what you have learned. Because of one reason or the other. Boom in the best boom. Suppression. Intentionally. Consciously. Push it away. Push the information away. So you will not remember them. They are not valuable to you. How then will it act in your life? How then will it act on your life? How then will it add value to you? You don't do that. Pride. This message, this book comes from this man, he's a minister. For some men, he's a minister, he's not an evangelist. He's just a brother. Why should he be telling me what he is? So, because he's not a minister, he cannot learn. Or you have heard something that is important to but because of that singular act of yours that you have said in your mind, you will forget everything. It will intentionally go up your mind. Because you didn't want to keep them on. Why? Who is he? Is he my boss? Who is he? What position he, does he have in life? What positions does he have? Does he have a car? Does he own a house? Is he married? Is it this? Is it that? So because of that, you devalue what you shouldn't. That should have saved your life. That is all. The personal mission. You were counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when you got to eight, you're supposed to say eight. You jump and you say nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 20, 20. We are omitting. Oh, I say I forgot. So check, check my memory. If you didn't forget, it was an intentional act. You want to uh, omit it because you don't value the person, because you don't like the person, because you are hating on the person. But I want to let you know that you hating the person does not make the whole world hate the person. Even when you and your group hate the person, other persons and their groups might not hate the person. So who knows? You have lost. You stand up, you have nothing to gain. And do not forget the Bible saying the measure you measure on someone is the same measure they will measure on TV. That is the same. The people that are going to hate on you will be pressed down together and shaking, pressed and shaking so that there will be space for more to enter and shaking. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what the Bible is saying. So all you are doing that are negativity are what? Vanity. Change from them. Ways to improve your ability not to forget to remember. There are certain things you have to do to keep the memory up and doing to remember certain things so you don't find yourself in problem. Reputation. Keep reciting what you know or what you want to remember. When we talk of reputation, reciting, you must not be saying it out. Keep thinking it in your heart. The message you have received today, feel it is important to you. Keep thinking it in your heart. Keep thinking about some point. The ones you have written down, keep thinking about them. That is one memory, memory techniques that you are using to make the memory active over what you always want to remember. Because of time, number two, practicalization. Put them to practice. If you don't put them to practice, come on, you are going to forget all. It's not about writing. And you write and read. Write, read, and act. Put them to practice. Number three, association. Connect new ideas together, link them together, associate with your friends, your peers, and then you teach each other what you have learned. Practice what you have learned with each other. That you keep what you have known active. Remember the topic, don't forget to remember. The Bible has given us four things we shouldn't forget to remember. And I have given us ten things we shouldn't forget to remember. In addition, I have ten things have been given to us what we shouldn't forget to remember. At least, if you don't have anything to remember, remember these four things. These techniques will help you to remember the four things. Number four, visualization. Visualize it. Picturize it in your mind. So if I'm able to remember some do something like this and do this and do this, how will my life be? It is going to be like this. If it is perfect, different visualization. Create mental image of every situation to aid your thoughts and action. Those mental images you create will help your thoughts and your actions and shape them. Ah. Spiritual practices. Things you need to do to help your spiritual growth and your spiritual remembrance. Number one, meditation. Meditate on the word of God. Keep reflecting on God's word. Keep reading the word of God. It will keep you to remember the, word, the messages that come from God. It will keep God talking to you at all times. Scripture memorization. Memorize the scripture. Read the Bible, understand your Bible, memorize them, remember them, and quote them. It will help you to live around. Take short notes. When lessons are going on in sermons, in teachings, in school, wherever you are, and those points are points that are important that can help your life, you will take short notes of them. Carry a piece of paper, carry your paper, your Bible, or your phone. That technologies, man. You take short notes, anyhow. Read them. We always remember them. Pray as often as possible. Pray as often as possible. If you don't pray as often as possible, you cannot remember. Remember what you need to pray for and pray for what you have remembered. Remember that 
You need to have this. Pray for what you have in mind. Another point. Fellowship with each other. When they say go to church, go to church. When they say come, come on visual, come online and start, come online and study. When they see ITV, say there will be a premiere of a lesson. Come, fellowship with each other. Discuss ideas together. And it will improve you. When they say come to church, go to church. You see ITV, say come here. Let us reason together. Come this reason. On the last Saturday of this month, we are going to have an open discussion. Join us online. And these are ways to keep remembering what you need to remember spiritually. That has to concern what? Spirituality. Lifestyle habits. Get enough sleep every day. Get enough sleep every day. It will help to improve the memory. Talk about that. Exercise regularly. Reduce stress. Practice mindfulness. Just focus on present things. Let the past thing be past thing. Let the bygone be bygone. Focus on the present state of your life. Let what has gone be gone. Don't continue to breathe into the past. You will be doing great. Learn to love and practice the fruit of the Spirit. Learn to love one another. Love yourself. And do not forget to practice the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, peace, patience, and all that you have. Technology and tools that can help you to always keep up your mind. Apps like the Bible apps, Bible games, note setting, and all of that. Now set reminders on your phones, computers, etc. Let there be reminders on your phone. There are no reason why you need to forget an important event. They are not an excuse. They're only showing that you are not intentional about people. They're only showing that you are not intentional about relationships. They're only showing that you are not intentional about people's events. When you, get for, you keep forgetting them. When you keep forgetting them. So do well to set reminders on whatever you could. Use the, make use of the flashcards to store your information, to store your, your voice notes, to store whatever. That is relevant, and you can make use of them again to show that you are intentional about them. Now, also be accountable. Be accountable on every information that you have gotten. Have a regular review of what you have learned. If you do not have a review of them, if you do not study, teach yourself, teach others, and keep talking about them, you will forget them. That is how the Word of God is. If you do not study the Word of God continuously, and keep reversing and keep reading, you'll forget about what it says. Now constantly reflect on your new thoughts. Share what you have learned with others. Constantly re reflect on your new thoughts. Share what you have learned with others. You do not reflect on the thoughts you have come across. You do not reflect on the new ideas you come across. You will end up forgetting them. Let the fruit of the Holy Spirit guide you always. Do not forget the fruit of the Holy Spirit, not the fruit of the flesh. So the fruit of the, the flesh fights against the spirit, and the spirit fights against the flesh. The flesh will always want to do those things that pertain to the flesh. The spirit will always want to do those things that pertain to the spirit. So therefore, always greet yourself with the fruit of the spirit. Well, it is the fruit of the spirit that will help you to live a spiritual life. A spiritual life that will be acceptable unto God. Now, are there consequences if you forget to remember what you ought to remember? Are there consequences? Do you think there are consequences, or do you think there are not? Let's, let's look at a um, few consequences that may probably happen. Number one, missed opportunities. If you fail to remember what you are supposed to, when you are supposed to remember them, and to act on them, when you are supposed to act on them, you miss opportunities. And that is why the Bible says that as we are in the world, once we leave this world and there is judgment, we have missed the opportunity of being here in the world. We have been missed the opportunity of doing good in the world. We have missed all the opportunity of what we are supposed to showcase as the children of God. And when we now appear before the judgment of God, there is no any other opportunity to do something. That's why the Bible says there is no more chance. So, you miss opportunity. What about if you are supposed to go for an interview? What about if you are supposed to go for an appointment? What about if you are supposed to go for people's occasions and events? You miss the opportunity because you have failed to remember either intentionally or what unintentionally. Number two, strange relationship. Just like I said earlier, you are going to strange your relationship. If you fail to remember people's birthday, you fail to remember people's uh, events that you have been invited, you fail to remember these and to remember that and to act upon them when you're supposed to act, your friendship will begin to wobble. 
you begin to dabble, you begin to have issues amongst you know your peers. Amongst it seems you do not value them, it seems you do not uh, take note of what they do, or it seems you, you are you are regard you, you are showing regardlessness towards them. You know, so you have to always remember what you should at the right time. Don't fail to remember. Always remember. Number three, poor decision making. If you fail to remember what you're supposed to remember, you will not make right decision. If you as a man fail to understand and to remember early when you're supposed to remember when you face the wrath that you are supposed to love your wife, you are not going to love your wife and you are going to act otherwise. If you as a woman fail to remember that the Bible says that you should be uh, 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 submissive, that you should be submissive to your husband in all things, and you fail to remember that, and you do otherwise, you have taken a poor word decision. When you fail you know, to remember what you are supposed to remember, when you are supposed to remember them, and act upon them, when you are supposed to act upon them, you have failed where you are not supposed to fail. So, lack of remembrance makes you want to work, take poor decisions. Don't fail to remember. Don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. The right things you are supposed to remember at the right time. Decreased efficiency. If you fail to remember and to act upon what you are supposed to act upon when you are supposed to act upon them, your efficiency in those areas will begin to do what decrease. When you say you are supposed to prepare for a class as a teacher, as a seminar, as whatever, and you fail to prepare, and in every time you always don't remember, and in every time you always don't remember, you discover that you are going to be failing in your efficiency. Next time, you, after, after giving a very long time, you know that you have not performed what you are supposed to perform, you are going to see yourself not doing the right thing. You are going to increase frustration. Once your efficiency is reduced, the next thing that will come is what? Frustration. Because you begin to struggle over building your relationship, you begin to struggle over building friendship that you are built in time, you begin to struggle with why? Because you have failed to remember what you are supposed to remember, at the time you are supposed to remember them, and act upon them when you are, you are supposed to act upon them. So, you begin to fail in your work, you begin to decrease in your work in your efficiency. Loss of personal history. If you fail to remember what you are supposed to remember and to act upon what you are supposed to act upon, you begin to lose your history. You begin to forget about the history between you and people. You know family history. If you knew quite well that you are supposed to be in a family meeting at a certain time and you fail to remember that, that you are supposed to be at that time, you forgot. My brother, you are not going, no matter how they are going to explain what had happened, you are not going to absorb it as, as though you are there. You need to lose history of what you are not supposed to. Next point, reduce learning. You are going to discover that your ability, your, your love for learning will begin to reduce. Don't forget to remember. Once you learn and you forget, you learn and you forget, you begin to hope. You begin to see that you feel you feel reluctant to learn. Because in all that you have been learning, it has had no value to you. You begin to feel reluctant to work learning. Increase trust. Next point, decrease trust. You discover that when you have forgotten what you're supposed to remember at the time you're supposed to remember them, the trust people have for you begins to reduce. Because so imagine that the minister it's always giving you responsibilities to carry out and you always have an excuses why you are not able to carry out those responsibilities. It's trust over your over your ability, over your availability and over your uh, uh, you know the confidence you will have over you on what on doing such a such a thing to be able to reduce. So it's applicable everywhere, among your friends, among your peers, in your offices, everywhere you find yourself. You give plenty of excuses at all times and do not act on what you should. You discover that trust people have to you to begin to reduce. You increase trust. You begin to be stressed from far and near because you are not acting on the things you are supposed to act at the right time. You have to work 
We have to answer queries from here and there. And you know, we have to prepare lies. We are going to a lot of people because it's intentionally, and most times unintentionally, didn't carry out the box. Spiritual stagnation. You discover that you found yourself standing at the same point in which you were standing. You know, in the, your spiritual standing you talk. So right from when you realize and was added to the church, you for that in the garden stage, you remain uh, there without thinking. You know. We forgot the Bible said that you should study to show yourself approved. To rightly be, be able to divide the word of the church and if you are stagnant spiritually, how will you and how will you not be stagnant when you do not have the word of God in you? Or when you forget that you're supposed to attend classes, or forget you're supposed to attend churches and programs, congregational programs and all of it. You begin to have what? Stagnation. Disconnection from God. Discover that you are going to be disconnected entirely from God. Why? Because you have decided to leave the things you're supposed to do. And unfortunately, God will not disconnect himself from any man. He stays where he is. The least man will run away, just like children. When they come in and say, they run away from home, they run away from their parents. Their parents are not where they are. So because of their crimes and their offenses, they begin to run away. So when you are, you know, not doing the right thing, the things that you go to do, you discover that you wish. You have yourself moving away from God. That is why you have the word disconnected. Production of faith. Your faith begins to reduce, you know, because you are not acting in the right pattern you are supposed to. So when any challenge comes before you, you don't have anything that you're going to subdue it because the only God is no longer in you. Because the faith people have upon you has gone away. Because the trust people have upon you has gone away. Now, I think you know for not forgetting what you should always remember. It is their reward. First, if you of the deeper understanding, you discover that your understanding over a subject matter is broader than high world. You discover that your, your, your understanding with your family, your understanding in your businesses, your understanding among your peers, in your offices, and all of that become broader than what it was and what it used to be. That is, that is the reward. You have a deeper understanding of the subject matter. Increase wisdom. You're going to see that your wisdom and understanding over an issue and the way you attack an issue, the way you talk about an issue, shows that you have a full knowledge of what you're talking about and what you're doing. And that's where the word of God comes. You will not have the wisdom of God. You cannot rightly divide the word of God. And if you do not study the word of God, you cannot have the right word wisdom at the right time. Stronger relationship. You discover that your relationship with people becomes stronger. The relationship amongst your peers, in your businesses, or wherever in your family becomes stronger. Why? Because you are committed to it. To improve productivity. You see that your level of what you are going to, you know, get as a, as, as a return of all that you have worked with, you what? Much. The productivity will be much because you have given your time, you have given your energy over what you are supposed to. And then the reward is what? Multiple blessings. All right. Then spiritual growth. You discover that because you are working rightly, you discover that you, because you are remembering what you're supposed to remember, you're not forgetting what you're supposed to remember, at the time you're supposed to remember them, you see that your standing with God will be what? To be increased. You know, the spiritual understanding, the spiritual standing with God will be improved because you keep reading the word of God, you keep studying, and you keep remembering what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do and avoid the what you're not supposed to do, and therefore, you know, the spiritual standing with God is what is in hands. Better decision making. We're going to see that decisions you are going to take will be more, much better than when you were not committed to what you were supposed to be committed to. Increase confidence. You see, your confidence in God, your confidence in the Word of God, your confidence in the, in the church that you belong, the confidence that you have on your family, on the confidence of your, on your peers, on your group that you belong to, all of us, you to increase. Because why? Why will you build your confidence? What you're going to give your confidence is your level of commitment. Your level of what? Commitment. You are not committed. And you know, giving your time to what you're supposed to, you see that you cannot increase what? Your confidence. Even your self-confidence. Your self-confidence on how you could be able to. If someone sends you a topic and says you are going to come to another place and pre uh, present yourself, you see, you begin to be you feel fragile about it because why? You have been negating responsibilities which are supposed to make you work fitted for a good job. Fitted for what God wants you to do. Helps to change your memories. If you continue to 
you know, remember the things you're supposed to remember and act upon them you're supposed to act upon them, you discover that you are going to trigger all your memories. You are, you are not going to be memories that you're going to leave aside because you are going to give your time to what you're supposed to give your time to and from that moment you create your memories. Increase in faith. Your faith in God will begin to increase and therefore you have good results. Effective in prayers and in communication. You discover that once you do not forget the things you are supposed to remember at the time you are supposed to remember them, your prayer and communication in your faith will begin to work increase. Amongst your families, amongst your friends, in your workplaces, and all of that, you begin to see that your communication will increase. You communicate regularly with God, you communicate regularly with man. So let's take a conclusion. Let's go back to our text and read verse 10 of it. It is Yastik chapter 11, verse 10. And therefore, remove sin from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. In all that you will do, do not forget that the Bible has instructed you today to put away all forms of evil from your body. Put away all forms of evil from your flesh. And let your flesh, you know, your body, be a temple of the Lord. So for childhood and youth is what vanity. Childhood and the wrong actions of during your youth time are what vanity. So if the Bible says they are vanity, indeed they are vanity. Thank you for joining us in uh, today's moment of inspiration. Just like we said earlier, the topic was Don't Forget to Remember. We're taking you through the understanding of the uh, of the terms in the topic, we're taking you through things you shouldn't forget to remember, we're taking you through a lot of things. We talked about 10 things you shouldn't forget, we talked about uh, why do you think people forget these things, these people do not remember things, we talked about different dimensions, we talked about you know, how to improve. Uh, your ability in remembering things we talk about in the memory techniques where you need to build your memory we talk about your spirituality practice what you need to do to help your spirituality grow we talk about lifestyle habits we talk about technology tools that you can you know have up that will help you to improve your remembrance we talk about things you need to do to show that you are accountable after keeping all of this also look at the consequences if you do not remember the things you're supposed to then we we'll talk about the reward if you remember the things you're supposed to remember at the time you're supposed to remember them. I want to say thank you so much for joining us in our section for this month. Don't forget this section, Moment of Inspiration. We we'll always come to you every second Saturday of the month of every month. By 8 p.m. It could be live, it could be premier. All you need to do is join our social media channel, especially our YouTube channel. That's where you're going to always have our videos before you can have an update of them later on on other channels all right so when you join don't forget to subscribe to ensure that you have our update and when you subscribe turn on the notification bell once you come live once you premiere anything you're going to receive a notification that we are up and you can be part and parcel of our class thank you for joining us once again i am your brother samuel Nana, representing the church of christ here in nigeria once again may god be with you until you see you again Goodbye.